Recently, we got some really exciting news from Meta that they released Llama 3.3. One of the first things that jumps out is how it's this perfect open source model that's packing the performance of much bigger models into a much smaller package. And it doesn't stop there. As you can see, it's been outshining Gemini, GPT-40, and Claude on a bunch of parameters. But here's the thing. While everyone's raving about the numbers and the benchmarks, hardly anyone's talking about the real magic, the brilliant engineering behind Llama 3.370B. Meta didn't just snap their fingers to make it faster and cheaper. They had to crack some of the toughest computational challenges in AI to pull this off. So the big question is, how did they do it? Let's dive in. The developments that Meta has been capable of achieving with this model are impressive. At significantly lower computational demands, they have managed to launch a 70 billion parameter model. In simpler terms, parameters are basically like knobs that the model adjusts in order to learn relationships in text. Having billions of parameters means Llama 3.3 is perfectly capable of generating responses that are contextually relevant and coherent throughout the conversation. But on the topic of parameters, many companies have been increasing their model's parameters with every update to achieve this, so it's not entirely new. What's actually different about Llama 3.3 is its use of grouped query attention, or GQA, which allows the model to process text much faster while requiring fewer computational resources and a lower cost. This is why, as the VP of Gen AI at Meta, Ahmad Aldal, said on X, Llama 3.3 can deliver pretty much the same, if not better performance, than their Llama 3.1405B model at a much, much lower cost. Also, this model uses a much more efficient tokenizer with a longer context window of 128K tokens, which makes it the perfect friend for long content generation, especially creative writing tasks. Although if you ask me, it's still pretty underrated when it comes to these tasks. While we're on the topic of all the impressive milestones that Llama 3.3 has achieved, this diagram from DataCamp is worth mentioning. That perfectly highlights the improvements. First is obviously the performance part we already talked about. But other than that, Llama 3.3 also provides language support in eight different languages, which include English, German, French, Italian, Portuguese, Hindi, Spanish, and Thai. That's because it has been pre-trained on more than 15 trillion tokens from public sources that includes high quality data, not just in English, but covering a total of over 30 languages. Then there's the efficiency side of things. This model is optimized for all the common GPUs and doesn't require any special expensive hardware, but we'll get into more of that soon. And lastly, while improving the performance, Meta also made sure the safety of the model isn't compromised at all. This model uses reinforcement learning with human feedback, or RLHF, and supervised fine-tuning, or SFT, which ensures that any inappropriate prompts are refused, and the model only gets better with each human feedback. But don't worry if you're confused, we'll get into more detail about all this. One of Llama 3.3's most impressive feats the fact that training and deploying it costs a lot less than GPT-4, thus making it a much more viable option for smaller teams and startups. Compared to the high-end GPU systems required to run GPT-4 or Llama 3.1-405B, Llama 3.3 feels like a blessing for common developer workstations because they can fully access and run this large model locally without any high-end enterprise-level infrastructure while still maintaining the strong model performance. This model is optimized in a way that it can run on any common GPU, but it is also easily scalable across different hardware setups, from single GPUs to fully distributed systems, which makes it a lot easier to experiment with, whether you're performing a local experiment or a larger deployment. This efficiency can also be attributed to GQA because it optimizes how the model processes text while reducing memory usage and speeding up the inference process. Other than GQA, this model also supports quantization techniques, which also significantly lower the memory requirements without sacrificing the model's performance. This means we can experiment with Llama 3.3 on affordable hardware setups, thus avoiding the high costs associated with most advanced AI models. Why wouldn't developers and startup teams not be attracted, right? Yama 3.3 is also particularly effective when it comes to tasks involving multilingual chat and synthetic data generation. It offers support in eight different languages, including English, Spanish, German, and even Hindi, thus making it your best friend when it comes to projects requiring multilingual capabilities. And no, this multilingual capability isn't just all talk and no actual play. 
Llama 3.3 actually demonstrates such strong multilingual reasoning that it has scored 91.1 on the multilingual MGSM benchmark, which actually overtakes GPT-40 and Gemini Pro. This makes the Llama 3.3 model a great choice for multilingual applications like translation or global customer support. While we're comparing Llama 3.3 with other models, GPT-4 and many other advanced models come with a hefty price tag. So, in an industry full of expensive models, Llama 3.3's open source framework really allows developers to build cutting edge applications without having to break the bank. This has the potential to make Llama 3.3 the key to democratizing innovation in the AI world. And what truly sets Llama 3.3 apart is its amazing adaptability. Whether you're in healthcare, finance, or gaming, you can fine tune this model to suit your exact needs. Need to build a medical assistant to quickly help patients set up a doctor's appointment or even to help them quickly diagnose their symptoms? Llama 3.3 can help. Need a model that helps students and teachers with education? Llama 3.3 has got your back again? Need help building a code for a game? You know it. Llama 3.3 can help. And this, honestly, you can't just attribute this accessibility to Meta alone. What also matters is the platforms that simplify the fine-tuning process even more. For example, Hugging Face. Any developer can go and deploy it on their device to create new innovations without requiring a high budget. It's amazing how Hugging Face makes AI tools so accessible and easy to use for developers. It really is pretty underrated if you ask me. In fact, did you know a small team of developers has already fine-tuned Llama 3 to create a legal assistant that can draft contracts and predict case outcomes. From being available 24-7 to performing a wide range of legal tasks and always ensuring top-notch security, this legal assistant does it all. But what actually made this innovation possible is the fact that Llama has always been a practical application that puts the power of AI into everyone's hands thus opening up a wide range of possibilities for developers and researchers. And trust me, the legal sector isn't the only place where it can be deemed useful. Considering one of its major strengths is handling multiple languages, it's ideal for building multilingual chatbots or virtual assistants. It's great because startups don't even need a data center to get started. Developers can easily prototype and deploy these systems on their own hardware, thus making it suitable for customer support or any other conversational applications that answer queries in different languages. Also, with an impressive 80 plus score in coding benchmarks, this model is also suitable for generating and debugging code. Considering there's no expensive cloud requirement, developers can easily make use of Llama 3.3 to automate repetitive tasks or create unit tests among many other applications. You could say Llama 3.3 can be like a coding assistant for developers of any level of experience, Yama 3.3 is also perfect for generating multilingual content. From translating technical documents, creating multilingual blogs, or drafting a product description in multiple languages, Llama 3.3 can really improve the overall process of localization without needing a team of translators working all day. Also, considering Llama 3.3 has a 1.8k token context window, it makes it suitable to create any kind of long content in many different languages, thus making it the perfect companion for creative writing. Last, but very definitely not the least, Llama 3.3 is overall a great option for startups, solo developers, or small teams who want advanced AI capabilities without the high cost of deployment. Just run it on a local server or even a single workstation and you're good to go. If no competing model comes out soon enough, we might start seeing Llama 3.3 being adopted by startups all around the world. But as great as open source AI sounds, it is a double-edged sword. Yes, it empowers innovation, but it also opens the door to misuse. In a time when everyone is already scared of AI due to the spreading of deep fakes and misinformation, Meta needs to ensure that their technology doesn't fall into the wrong hands and is always used responsibly. But how can they do that? Firstly, Meta has focused on instruction fine-tuning, which is usually done to improve performance, but Meta also used it to improve on the safety aspect. Instructing fine-tuning refers to training a model on exact input and outputs to ensure contextually relevant responses to user prompts. Meta also used this step to ensure that any potentially risky prompts are detected by the model and rejected. They even tested it by internal and external red teaming to ensure any harmful prompts are not catered to. Other than that, Llama 3.3 also has a code shield, which is a real-time tool to detect any insecure or harmful outputs when it comes to code. 
all these efforts make Llama 3.3 one of the safest open source LLMs out there right now. So trust me, there's no need to be scared. By now, if you're wondering how to get started with Llama 3.3, I've got you covered. In just a few steps, you can set up the model on Hugging Face and start experimenting. Just go on huggingface.com slash metallama. I've also added the link in the video description below to help you out. But on this page, go ahead and log into your account or sign up if you don't already have an account. Then, if you scroll down on this page, you'll see all the meta collections on Hugging Face. Choose the one you want in this case, Llama 3.3. Once you select the model, you will be taken to a page with the license agreement of the model. If you're working in a startup, or even if you're working alone, I'd recommend you diligently go through this license agreement. And scrolling down on the license page, you'll see a form where you can fill in your information to ask for the model access. Here, you have to add your first name, last name, date of birth, country, affiliation, and finally, job title. Once you've filled all your information and accepted the agreement, your information is reviewed by the Hugging Face and Meta team. This review process can take up to a few days, but as soon as it's done, you'll receive a follow-up email telling you that you have access to the requested model. Once you get the email, you can go ahead and start playing around. However, if you ask me, Llama 3.3 isn't just another AI model. It's a wake-up call for the industry. The fact that its open source approach is getting so much hype around the AI community is a sign that it's time for big players like OpenAI to rethink their LLM strategies. Llama 3.3 is more efficient, more capable, and more accessible than ever before. In fact, did you know there's already more than 650 million downloads of Llama models by now? And moreover, they're already used by enterprises like Shopify as well. Overall, Llama is almost approaching 700 million monthly active users, which means it could potentially become the most used AI assistant all around the world. However, one thing that needs to be talked about here is, are these actually 650 million different users or just 650 accounts? We all know accounts don't mean users, like this user pointed out. This is a serious consideration, but it points to one thing. Users need to make sure they go through every single part of a license agreement before using a model. It's more important now than ever before. However, with this much growth of Llama, it is definitely leaving an impact on the industry and making them reconsider open source technologies. Up till now, most big AI companies, including OpenAI, have always worked in closed source models, but we might see that trend change soon enough. And if that happens, rest assured, we're gonna enter a whole new era of AI innovation. And trust me, it's going to be an exciting one, especially for startups that wanna leverage AI technologies at a lower cost. However, as far as Meta's future is concerned, Mark Zuckerberg has already hinted at the development of Llama 4 expected to be released in early 2025. However, right now, it looks like this new model might require more compute power for training. As we heard, Meta recently invested $10 billion in a new AI data center in Louisiana to support future developments. But with Llama 3.3 setting the bar this high, what else could Llama 4 bring? multimodal capabilities, enhanced reasoning, the possibilities are endless and the future looks bright and it's even better considering it's all going to be open source. AI is transforming the world every day, especially Fugato, which is something you need to see to believe, like in this video here. But what do you think are open source LLMs the future of AI or is open source still too risky? Let's discuss in the comments down below. If you're interested in how these AIs are transforming the world every day, make sure to subscribe so you never miss one. And I'll see you all next time.